Good morning. A couple of weeks ago, we were coming back from Kent and had done about 250 miles and the van went into limp mode. The glow plug light and the engine light were flashing and alternating and the vehicle had virtually no power at all. I stopped, turned the engine off, cycled the ignition and the lights went out until I tried to pull away. This thing here is the turbo actuator. It's operated by vacuum, that tube there. And that tube is controlled by a valve, commonly known as the N75 valve, which is tucked away right down. Sticks in the way, can't you stick it in the way? It's that down there, and it's probably not going to focus properly. And the ECU switches the valve on and off very, very rapidly, and that determines how far the turbo is open. And then there's a sensor on the um, turbo actuator that actually tells the ECU whether it's open or not. And obviously, some kind of problem had occurred where <coughs> the ECU decided the turbo wasn't being operated correctly, so it put the vehicle into limp mode. This valve is also vacuum operated and it goes to a bunch of connections, a three-way connection that goes into this black container down here which is just a reservoir for vacuum. And the vacuum itself is derived from the vacuum pump. And there's a dirty great big thick pipe that one there, down there, which goes to the non-return valve in the servo there, and then the vacuum that goes and feeds the turbo actuator plus a water valve and something else. Turbo, yeah, turbo actuator and water valve is fed by this pipe here. The non-return valve there seems to be unavailable as an individual part and it seems to be uh, glued maybe into this thick pipe. The thick pipe is 235 quid or thereabouts. It's a stupid amount of money for um, a mouldy piece of pipe that goes to this connection here, the vacuum pump of the engine and the large, will it focus, that large reservoir down the bottom there which is a vacuum reservoir. Um, and I was wondering where my problem was. I did a vacuum test on the pipe going from this three-way branch over here which is that black pipe there and there seemed to be a very 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 slight leak in the N75 valve um, so I replaced it but I wasn't entirely comfortable that that was the end of the problem because when I was doing the vacuum test I did notice when you put the brakes on there was a drop a slight drop in pressure in the pipe work to the N75 valve and that shouldn't happen because there are so it's trying to get the camera in the way there are two non-return valves down here this non-return valve on the top here is is sorry the non-return valve with that brown pipe in it is the one that's coming from the vacuum feed from the servo it should be able to create pressure in this small reservoir down the bottom here but not um, leak back they're very 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 cheap these valves um, so I ordered a couple and I'm glad I did. Um, even though I changed the N75 valve, um, I wasn't convinced that was, the, that was the end of the problem. What I did find when I was experimenting down here before I ordered these two valves is the pipe that the N75 valve is fed by, which is that one on the right there. Is it going to focus, 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 focus? Is it going to focus? Oh, well, anyway, the one on the right, it was a very, very loose fit into that three-way um, T-piece. So, what was the actual problem? Over here, we have a vacuum gauge. 14 quid off of eBay. Well worth buying. You can do lots of things with vacuum gauge, including testing stuff. Here's the two little valves I just replaced. They're black and white, so it makes it easy to identify which way they should be connected. And um, you can see the one on the right is dirtier, but for what a better term. There's probably a degree of um, soot or 
um, fume ingress that gets into the vacuum pipe work over a period of time. So let's plug this in and show you what happened. So that's the good valve plugged in. And it should, unless I'm pump that up to 25. Let's hold the vacuum. And it holds a vacuum at the white end and obviously it allows air through um, on the black end. So if I tried to start to pull a vacuum on the black end, it wouldn't work. But that one, that's perfectly okay. Works a treat. Now look at the next one. So this is the non-return valve that was in the vacuum feed from the servo that basically um, creates the vacuum in the small little reservoir, um, which is then used by the turbo actuator and the valve in the uh, hot water system. Bang. It's not working at all. In fact, I'm surprised. I may have even made it work, worth taking it out. I'm surprised I had any turbo operation at all because I've effectively got a leak across that. Um, and the end result was the whole system was holding the vacuum, but when you put the brakes on, the amount of vacuum being drawn from the uh, vacuum pump and in the larger reservoir tank was probably getting depleted to the point where there wasn't enough vacuum in the system to keep the turbo either in the position it needed to be or even operated. I wonder what it's been doing to my fuel consumption. But anyway, there you can see, that's got a leak. Now what I might do in a minute, I'm going to wash that out. I'm wondering if the amount of soot and stuff has actually um, simply um, caused it to be dirty. But I'm going to give it a clean out and just see if I can prove it. But it's definitely going in the bin. But there you go. Very, very cheap part. Almost certainly the root cause of why the vehicle were developed a fault. Um, I've never, it's never happened before. So this may have only just failed. Or this may have just been part of the problem because as I said the vacuum pipe into the uh, three-way T-piece to the N75 valve was actually a very very loose fit as well so there would have been a very very slight leak there and that's probably what I was measuring when I first tested it and think, thought it was the actual fault with the valve. So for the price of one of these little gauges well worth having. Anyway thought that might be useful to somebody you know if you think you've got an N75 volt or if you think you've got a turbo actuator fault, obviously do your vacuum test on that local pipe work first, but then don't discount the fact that you might have more than one problem. And I certainly had a combination of two issues. Um, I say, this is dropping so much now. Um, I'm surprised every time I put the brakes on, I didn't end up with a fault um, or a problem with the turbo. And maybe I have. Maybe um, it's now just got to the point now where it's so bad it was actually causing an error code. But there you go. A leaky six or seven pound valve. Well, a slight foot note. Just used an old syringe to pump some soapy water through this valve. And it's now holding a vacuum. Would I trust it? No. What, could I have done that as an emergency repair by the roadside? Absolutely. Well, see what I had this gadget here to test it. But just by pumping a bit of water through it, I've obviously flushed out whatever bit of grit or filth or whatever it was that was causing it to jam. But yeah, that's now holding the vacuum. Still going in the bin though. But um, interesting experiment. Thanks for watching.